What's up? Hello, my little Photoshop magicians. Welcome to the tea time questions where you ask me questions and I answer them. To make it easier for you, I will put the time codes in the comment section so that you can just see the questions that you want to be answered. In case you don't know who I am, you don't know who I am? Are you crazy? I will find you and destroy your Photoshop. So anyway, I'm a Photoshop teacher and also an artist who posts almost daily on Instagram and had got um, a bit of following, not too much depending who you compare it with, but it's okay. And let's get into the questions. So the first question is, why are you crazy? What? Why not? <laughs> Anyway, let's go into some serious stuff. How can I start as a digital artist on social media? Or also a similar question is how to build my Instagram following. So first of all, before you start as an artist on social media, you should think, do you really need to post your artworks on Instagram? I mean, what is your end goal? Is your goal to make art or to make art with your money? <laughs> That's the way to make money with your art. For example, when I started uh, posting my artworks on Instagram, of course, I also didn't have a clear goal. I was just posting artworks. But then I actually started teaching how to create different types of artworks. I started doing commission work uh, for different singers, just for different people who want some cool art on their profiles. That's why, for example, now for me, it makes sense to grow my Instagram so I can get more clients, right? So that's why you should think first, do you really need an Instagram following? I mean, are you going to make money out of it or not? Because if not, if you're planning to use it just for hobby, then you obviously need to make money from something else. So you will need to have a full-time job anyway. Okay, now let's go to step two. Let's say, for example, that you decided that you want to make your artworks a full-time job. Now it makes sense for you to grow your Instagram. The way you do it, first of all, you need to define a concept for your Instagram account. For example, my concept is that every time I post an artwork, I also post short video tutorial of how this artwork was done. Quite often without the sound, but I also do some voiceover uh, funny video tutorials that people love. So you need to find out your own concept and make sure that you provide some kind of value to people. That's why I actually post all these processes because people, lots of people who follow me, they don't just follow me because they like my art. They follow me because they want to see how these things were done so they can create them themselves. So that's why providing value is very important. Of course, there are artists who are just posting beautiful artworks and they have hundreds, thousands of followers, but they have been doing this for years. So it's gonna be much more difficult for you to grow followers if you just post beautiful artworks and uh, expect people just to follow you for that. I mean, they will follow you, but it will take really lots of time. So in case you decide to start growing your Instagram, just plan five years ahead. Yeah, I'm not kidding. For example, this is my third year of doing Instagram. I have like 37,000 followers. I don't even have 100,000, so it's really difficult. It's not about how many followers you have. And I know you have heard it a lot of times, but what I'm saying is different, okay? If you want to make money with your art, then even if you have, let's say, 5,000 followers, you will be able to make money with your art if the people who follow you are actually interested in doing business with you. So basically what it means is that you need to find the right type of people, okay? If you if one day you decide to advertise your Instagram account, you need to advertise it to the right people, the people that will actually make business with you so you can earn some money and uh, not die from hunger, right? <laughs> like most artists did in the past. <laughs> if you have watched like biographies of some artists. So stupid, finally, when you have figured out your whole, the whole concept for your Instagram account, you need to think how you're going to grow it, how you're going to get more followers. And there are mainly two ways to do it. Number one, paid ads on Instagram, which means using Instagram's own ad platform in order to promote your artworks and get more followers. It's gonna cost you money, but that's one of the options. Number two, also of course with money, is to actually contact some art pages and uh, ask them to post your artwork and of course they will ask you for money for that so depending on how big the art page is, they will request different amounts of money for example let's say if a page is uh, if a page has 1 million followers they may ask around uh, 60 70 dollars as an example and that's actually a reasonable uh, amount of money because if the artwork that you're sharing is really good then you will probably get around 1000 followers from this page and that's a really good result for 60 70 dollars getting 1000 followers that's really really good trust me but you also need to make sure that you're sharing with them your best piece of artwork okay not just something beautiful but something that will make people stop and be like wow what is this who is that person? And now you may ask, well, what about the free ways of promoting your Instagram account? Well, unfortunately, this is almost impossible in today's Instagram. It, it could be possible a few years ago, but now it's not possible. Even if you use hashtags 
um, most likely if your Instagram account is too small you will not get discovered that many times on hashtags uh, usually hashtags is useful for people who already have at least few thousand followers and that will help them to get discovered so what I would advise you to do is to have some kind of side job and then get salary from that job invest all of that job into Instagram promotions and do that until you start getting clients on Instagram and you can work full-time on Instagram how do you think of such a nightmarish art and what is your inspiration so let's start first of all with the inspiration part I actually have I actually have made a separate video a long time ago about how to come up with some art ideas and find inspiration and uh, the basic concept is that you have an art style right for example I have an art style where I almost always use a person's face and modify it in some way just figure out your art style first okay now second step is to find some kind of object some weird object for example for example, for example let's see let's say you have a camera on your table right and then you can think of how can I take this object and combine it with my art style in my case is the face how can I combine it with the camera and naturally the first thing that comes to my mind is use camera put it instead of eyes and make a human cyborg that has camera instead of eyes so just some kind of weird idea like that or for example just, it can be some random stuff for example let's say let's say a sink right this the sink where the water comes out from <laughs> oh it's not called sink it's tap anyway you can just take it put it inside someone's head for example in my case that's the animation i did i put it inside someone's head and then i made water go down from there and then i called it smart decision or something like that so basically smart decisions are getting out of your head by a tap again another weird idea but it worked now to answer the second part of this question is why my artworks are so scary sometimes i do have some artworks that are not scary but i also have lots of scary artworks i think it depends on person for example i really like dark jokes i'm not afraid to modify the face and do something creepy with it i also like creepy unusual stuff i don't like just some beautiful artworks i want an artwork to give you some feelings you know and when you say creepy artwork a scary artwork you get actually some feelings when you see just a beautiful thing you're just like oh that's so beautiful but there's nothing you f that you feel inside you know just drink vodka and store it <laughs> this thing is not even called vodka it's just called alcohol it's just pure alcohol it's not even vodka because vodka has like 40 percent alcohol <clears throat> for you my friends <sighs> who the f wrote that are you happy now asshole. what is your other job than photoshop Okay, this is actually a really good question because it can help you to find out what else can you do in order to earn money other than just using Photoshop or creating artworks as if you are a designer, for example. So first of all, I do artworks for clients, like commissions, you know, these are usually just people who want artworks for their songs or these are people who want artworks just to post on their Instagram profile and be beautiful. I do sell artworks on different platforms like Society, uh, Redbubble, and others part and by the way I will have a link in the description if you want to buy some of my creepy artworks okay these artworks are especially good to show your guests as soon as they see it they will leave your house immediately other than that I also teach Photoshop uh, I do teach on various platforms I also have my own website you probably already know that number four I also do web and app designs for different companies, startups, people, and so on. So in other words, I have four types of income, and this is very important, especially when you're a freelancer. So when you're working on your own, when you're a freelancer, it's very important to have different types of incomes. In case of one of them dies, or even two of them dies, you still have the other two left. You still have some money to pay for your rent and other stuff. Whenever you start anything new, any type of new project, business, don't expect to get some money like in the first two, three, four, five months even. Most of the things that I just just told you I didn't earn anything for almost a year when I started and that is totally fine but second and third year you will start earning some good money if you do it right and constantly how does your brain work it doesn't one of the good things that I love about my brain is that I'm not afraid to be stupid and that's very important because if you're not afraid to be stupid then you will do things that no one else would do you do 10 stupid things nine of them are really stupid but one of them is so genius that everyone will love you and everyone will think you as the smartest person on earth so don't be afraid to do stupid things that's my life philosophy <laughs> okay so before we go to other questions 
I would like to show you the best ad ever. This ad is so good that you will want to marry it. Wow. Oh wait, someone is calling. Hello? Yes, who is that? Shut up and listen. If you want to access tons of premium Photoshop classes for free, then go to learnfromfred.com and start your free trial now. W what if I don't? Then I will destroy your Photoshop. Don't make me angry. Okay, okay, sure, no problem, sure. No, 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 no problem at all. Sure. Welcome back. So now we have some short questions left. Would you consider doing more animations and some sky fi So I actually did recently some sky fi animation where like the flying head in a space. And unfortunately this tutorial didn't go too well. So I will still do more probably, but maybe just in a different format. But yeah, I think I will do more. Where are you from? Well, that's a really interesting question, right? Because, so let me tell you what languages I can speak. I can speak German, but I'm not from Germany. I can speak Russian, but I'm not from Russia. I can speak English, but I'm not from any English any English speaking country. Speaking. <laughs> I can speak Turkish, kinda, but I'm not from Turkey. So four languages that I can speak that don't really belong to my country. Okay, I also learned French at school. And now the question where I'm from. Well, I am from a country called Azerbaijan, which is located near Turkey and Russia. On the north there is Russia, on the south there is Iran. It's a pretty interesting location because it, it's in between Europe and Asia. And I don't really know who I am in terms of like geography, because geographically I am Asian, but politically we are in Europe, so I'm like... Our neighbors are Middle Eastern countries also. So who am I? So I'm basically a European, Asian, Muslim who can also speak Russian. The last question is... How old am I? Well, I am 